Hi, this is Jen Schaefer. Thank you for joining me as I continue on with my planner series. Here's my completed planner spread from last week. I love how the fun out of this world theme turned out and the bright and beautiful colors. For my memory planner for this week, I decided to keep the same stamp set but give it a bit of a different black and white feel. I used the Happy Planner stickers for the background and quote, then stamped the sun in each planet and just added some shading with a black colored pencil to give each image a distinct and rounded feel. I also went with the rough planet order for our solar system, at least as close as you can get with this type of format. Back in my main planner, I'm going to be planning the week of July 3rd through the 9th. This is the first week of my Christmas in July series where I'm going to use Christmas themed stamps for a non-Christmas spread. This week, I'm using the stamps at Merry Christmas, which was a collaboration between Lawn Fawn and Simon Says Stamp. Before I get to decorating though, I'm going to start out with my usual step of putting down my headers. Like the last few weeks, I'll be using this colorful variety from Planner Sticker Jubilo on Etsy. This week is the 4th of July, so I'm going for a red, or rather pink, white and blue theme. As I'd done in a previous week, I'm going to use a purple color to help transition from the pink to the blue. Last time I went from blue to red, so this time I'm going to go from pink to blue. So I put my blue headers towards the right. This week is also going to be differentiated from the feel of that week because I'm going to be color blocking rather than mixing up my colors. So all the blue days will stay entirely blue and all the pink days will be pink. I think this is a nice change that ends up looking very different from my previous spreads. When I finished with all the blue headers, I moved on to the pink ones on the left page. With the headers in place, I moved on to selecting the heart checklists. There's a wide variety on this page, but the blue colors don't match exactly. That's fine though, they're close enough, and when I get into adding hearts for today items and other accents, they won't match exactly either, but the general look will blend together pretty well. I was able to get the purple and pinks to match up though, so I used the corresponding colors when I could. I love how these checklists fill the space and give a lot of room for adding daily to-do items. I also love the flagged ends, I think it gives a section that added little touch of visual interest that I think is nice. Once I was done placing the heart checklists, I moved on to the step trackers, which I'm again going to place in my little things section. I found some pink, purple, and blue step trackers in one of my Happy Planner sticker books, so I placed those towards the bottom of each section. Because I am color blocking this week, I was careful to put them with the corresponding color rather than mixing things up like I normally do. I love how this starts to give the page a nice gradient look. My next step is to start filling the events for the week. Tuesday is a holiday, so I started by placing the Scripty Independence Day sticker from a Happy Planner sticker book. I added in this cute little star from the same page because it matched my color scheme perfectly. I also found the weekend sticker that matches the blue really well, so I put it in place towards the bottom of the today section for Saturday and Sunday. Then I can start adding in more specific events. Monday, I have a doctor's appointment. It's pretty exciting. Our appointments for our soon to arrive son are going to be every two weeks and then going down to every week after that. We are also pretty sure we're having him on the 11th with a planned C-section. I ended up needing a C-section for my first son after being a week late and inducing not working, so my doctor left it up to us if we wanted to try natural again or plan on a c-section, and that was the choice that made more sense to us. I'm really nervous, but also excited that the date is getting so close. This week, it's also exciting because we decided to spend the 4th with my best friend and her family. They had a barbecue, and the kids got to play with a water table and sparklers before we walked to a good spot to watch some fireworks. It was so much fun. I also added in some to-do items, memories for the week, and steps once I had the daily events. Because my husband had Monday and Tuesday off, we were able to get a lot done. Sunday night was also my son's first night in his big kid room, and he did great with it. His first nap in the room wasn't until Tuesday, and that went well too. Hopefully our luck continues. We're not changing his old room much, because it will be our second son's new room after a few months. Plus, our son may still use the crib on occasion until then. Later in the week, we will have some usual items. On Friday, we hit 34 weeks, which means we're just five weeks away from meeting our little guy if we confirm our 11th delivery date. Thursday, we have our library story time. Right before recording this voiceover, I found out that our usual librarian is leaving at the end of July to move closer to family. It's a little sad, but we wish her the best, and I'm sure whoever replaces her will be great. Next, I wanted to start working on some of my decorative items. 
As I said before, I am going to be using the Merry Christmas stamp set from Lawn Fawn and Simon Says Stamp. From it, I'm going to be using all of the mice except for the one with the Santa hat. I think you could do some creative masking to remove the hat, but I didn't think the extra mouse would be necessary for my layout, so I left him out. I stamped the mouse with the present, the mouse holding nothing, and the mouse peeking out of the stocking from the set. For the last mouse, I decided to just stamp the upper half, so he could be peeking out from wherever I decide looks best, not from the Christmassy stocking. I decided to stamp two of each mice, so I'll have plenty of options for replacement. For a little added variety, I decided to also use the small mouse from the Lawn Fawn stamp set, Elfie Selfie. I love how it matches the design of the other Lawn Fawn stamp sets and fits in perfectly. Also from the same stamp set, I'm going to use a pennant flag that I will stamp multiple times. I'm going to use this to create a banner in my final spread that will add a nice decorative touch. Because one of my banners didn't stamp very well, I used a Sharpie fine tip marker to clean up the line. Now, you can hardly tell my stamping impression didn't go as well as I would have liked. Next, I moved on to coloring. This week, I'm using my Prisma Color colored pencils. Because the headers this week are in pastel colors, I thought the more pastel look of colored pencils would fit in perfectly. Plus, I have a fairly small color palette with pink, purple, and blue, so my limited number of colored pencils should work out just fine. I'll also add in brown for the mice's fur, which works well with this set of colors. I'm starting out with a few layers of sienna brown. This is the lighter brown in the 12 pencil set and makes a nice base color for these mice. I went for an overall coverage and did multiple layers and areas until I was happy with the way the mouse was starting to look. With something like this, you want to do several light layers. It's a lot easier to try building color than it is to um, use your pencil too firmly and risk too much uneven color or a waxy buildup on your image. When I was happy with the light brown, I moved on to adding in shadows with dark brown. Because I use several light layers, I am easily able to add in another layer of the darker color. This works great in areas where you want to add more darkness and depth. Adding it to the edges as well as under limbs, behind ears, and such gives the mice a more three-dimensional look. I also use the crimson red colored pencil to add redness to the ears and cheek. Again, because I use multiple light layers, I was add able to add in some rosiness to the cheeks over the brown fur with no issues. For the little package the mouse was holding, I used true blue. I used several darker layers for the package and a light single layer for the bow. This gives the impression of the bow and package being separate pieces while keeping them matching my color scheme because they're both blue. I even used a little violet blue to darken the blue, though I don't think it ended up being necessary. I used the same technique to color the other mice, making the package for the other mouse red so I would be able to place it in the pink section. I colored most of the banners red except one, then cut out all of the images. I didn't bother cutting out the mice's tail, or the sticks for the flags, because those are easy enough to add in later with a pen, and are a bit of a pain to cut out. For my bottom bar, I decided to go with the style I've gone with before, and use washi tape to frame out the area. It's not strictly necessary, but I like the look of it, and it continues the color downwards. To keep with my color blocking, I added in pink tape below the three sections on the left. I don't worry about the fact that the pinks are a gradient of colors rather than a single shade because you don't notice in the end result and I don't have that many shades of washi tape anyways. When I'm happy with the pink, I move on to the purple section. Since this is only one day in the week, I only add the purple to that section. I like how this matches the section and helps continue the look I'm going for. I'll add blue washi tape to the bottom bar in the last three days, putting the left side of the tape up to the purple tape to give it a more continuous look. I really like the way that turns out. To finish setting up my normal design, I added a box from a Happy Planner sticker book that says plants to use in my next week section. I chose one with a pink border to match the headers and the stickers on the left side of the page, then I was ready to decorate. I started out by laying out my red banner stickers. I had taken a black Sharpie marker and written out the letters to celebrate on them. I thought this would be the perfect sentiment to add to the first half of the week because my husband getting a few extra days off, and Tuesday being Independence Day. To give my flag something to attach them to the page, I tried drawing a clothesline type string across the section. I did a horrible job at it though, but that's fine, I knew I could make it work. So I took my pen and added in several additional lines to give it the look that I made this design intentionally, and that's like several strings of twine holding up my flags. When I was happy with this, I started adding in the stickers. I went with the B first because it's the central letter in the word, and by placing it first and in the middle, 
I was able to place the remaining letters accordingly so that they were all fairly evenly spaced out. With this piece of my design in place, I could decide where I wanted to put my remaining mice stickers. There were only a few that knew what side they'd go on based on the colors that I used, but for the rest I was able to fit them in wherever I thought a space needed filled. When I was happy with the general location of the mice, I went in and stuck them in place. I also used a fine tip marker to add in back their tails, as well as a stick for the remaining flag. When I was finished with my mice, I decided the page still needed something. What's the 4th of July without fireworks? I don't have a firework stamp, so I decided to improvise. First, I took some pink star stamps from a Happy Planner sticker book and placed them in several spots that were blank on the sidebar. Then, I took my marker and drew several lines and dots coming out from the stars, as well as several dots to fill in empty spaces. While this doesn't look exactly like the perfect firework, I think it's still a cool look considering I didn't have any stamps to give it to me. I also continued the color blocking that I was going for, so that's a nice bonus. To finish off the page, I wrote in our plans for next week. My son and I are both due for haircuts, so I scheduled those for the next week. We are also taking a trip to visit my husband's family in Michigan, which will include some relaxing with his parents and brothers, as well as a family reunion on Sunday. We've gone the last few years, but this is our first year taking Monday off as well, so we won't have such a late night driving home on Sunday. I thought that this would be nice with a toddler in the car, plus me being close to eight months pregnant at the time. We'll probably need a few extra stops on our drive. Thank you so much for watching my video, and I hope you enjoyed my latest planner episode. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button, and if you'd like to see more like it or more from me, please subscribe. Be sure to check the description for further details, and I hope to see you again next time.